Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to do some planting out in the South Garden. I've got some gorgeous things here, two different types of perennials, one rose and one annual. So the focus today is on things that like sun. So we've got denim and lace Russian sage. We've got a brand new sedum that's coming out, I think next year, it's called Midnight Velvet. I planted three of these in front of the chicken coop and I'm loving them. We've got a new rose called uh, Rise Up Lilac Days, which we actually wintered over from last year. So it needs to get out of its container. And then the annual we have is the Double Twilight Super Bells. And I'm gonna run an experiment with these. Aren't they beautiful? Ugh. On the description of all Super Bells, it talks about how they need to have well-draining soil. Like they are the type that um, need to dry out just a little bit between watering. And it says that most gardeners will do better with them in containers. I'm gonna plant them in the ground today just because I don't think I've ever planted Super Bells in the ground because of that warning and maybe I will regret it. Or maybe we'll find that I have better luck with Super Bells in the ground than I do in containers. I just have these beautiful plants left over from another project and I thought it would be a really good opportunity to try it out. Now all of these, including the Super Bells, are those that will add a tremendous amount of color through the dog days of summer through the fall. In fact, denim and lace Russian sage in our garden, I'll show you what ours looks like, it's not this far ahead. Um, so these are, well, in containers clearly. So they're a little bit uh, further on and they're already showing their color, but typically they start coloring up in July uh, and then they just look beautiful through the whole season. And then the sedum, of course, they look amazing pretty much all year. There's really only a brief moment in the early spring when we cut them back after winter uh, until they start flushing new growth where you don't really see them. But other than that, they look pretty no matter what stage they're in. When these push new growth in the spring, they almost look like little rosettes, like an Echeveria succulent almost. They're so sweet and so pretty. Then they put on vertical growth and they start setting their flower buds like midsummer, and then they start to open mid to late summer and then through fall. And sedum just adds so much to the fall landscape and to the winter landscape. We don't cut ours back until really early in the spring. We like to leave them up because the stems are strong enough to withstand quite a bit of the winter elements. They look so pretty with a dusting of snow on top and they also provide some forage and habitat for wildlife. And the best part about both the Russian sage and the sedum is that neither of them have to be deadheaded. It's kind of along the same lines as hydrangeas and that's the reason why I like to plant a lot of them. Once they start blooming they just hang on to their blooms and they look good all season. And it's the same with these two as well. They just do their thing. It's once a year cut back and we're good to go. And the other thing about both of these is that you will not see me adding any starter fertilizer to the soil. In fact, they do not want to be fertilized. Uh, they want full sun, they want heat, they want crummy soil. They just need to be in a spot that's well draining. So that's basically all they need is full sun and well draining soil and they will be so, so happy. Now the sedum is a zone three through nine. The Russian sage, I can't remember. Zone four through nine. So both winter hardy. I love it when they span you know, a lot of zones, so a lot of us can grow them. Now, this Rise Up Lilac Days Rose, maybe we can toss a picture up on the screen to give this plant justice. This one is starting to bud up again, but these, these blooms are almost done from its first flush. They call this either a mini climber or a large shrub rose, which we're gonna be treating it as a large shrub rose, so we'll be trimming it down a little bit more than if we were gonna be, you know, wanting to let it be a climber, but it will naturally grow about five to eight feet tall and two to four feet wide. That one's also a zone four through nine, and it doesn't have to be deadheaded for it to continue to bloom. It will just continue to bloom on its own. Roses most of the time though, I like the look of them when they're cleaned up, tidied up just a little bit. But I think this soft lilac color is really unique and it's gonna be so pretty tucked into a flower bed. I've got my auger and my shovel. I do have some Biotone starter fertilizer somewhere in here for the rose. Yeah, right here and for the Super Bells. I think I'm gonna be relying on my shovel more than anything today because we're gonna be planting out in the South Garden and Bethany and Paul have been hard at it getting everything mulched out there. It looks so pretty and when I dig holes with a shovel, it's a little bit tidier than with an auger. <laughs> so I don't want to make it look like a big old mess right where I just was. So I'm gonna to try to do this a little slower and a little bit more tenderly. These will look gorgeous just all in one big group out there. Just look at it out here. Oh my goodness. See, this is why I want to use a shovel because it looks so perfect. They've done such a beautiful job. And we're working on, we pack the compost in the stones and we've been wetting them down. We've had some rain too. And so we'll come along with more compost here in a little while after it settles a little bit more. And we'll keep doing that until the compost is at the same level 
as the stones, but it's just looking so great. Here are the things that we planted out the other day. We've got the reminiscent pink roses, which already are looking really nice. They were looking a little chlorotic the other day. I gave them some iron and I swear that stuff works so fast. So they're looking great. The fuchsia is bright, echinacea looking great. Also the lantana, which is looking like maybe we have a bit too much water going on in this area. Oh my mercy. Lantana won't like that very much. We'll have to address that. We've got a hole or something. Hmm. So I think I would like to add at least the sedum because we've got a lot of green and blue over here. I think it might look really nice. Well, maybe we'll do like the denim and lace kind of as a behind layer and do the sedum as a front layer. I think that would look really good. Just a lot of spots here where I think that all of those plants would look great. Couple of little plant updates because this one's almost done, but our Jerusalem sage has just bloomed so beautifully and it's starting to drop all of its petals, but oh, I'm so thankful. And the persimmon supertunias are looking exceptional. My word. And right here you can see our denim and lace Russian sage. So there's one, two, three, four, five in this spot. Tuscan sun heliopsis looking awesome. There's also Russian sage on the other side, but it's just starting to bud up. I'm just barely seeing a little haze of lavender. So clearly you can see the difference between the two. All right, guys, so I'm just gonna get these all planted. Then we will walk through and take a look at where they all ended up. Change of plan, I decided to move all the plants over here to the opposite side of the south garden because as I was digging holes over there, I remembered how hard pan the soil is. We've been trying to adjust our watering system to where we're watering less frequently but longer soaks, so deeper soaks. And I don't think that that's necessarily the way we wanna go in an area with hard pan because that amount of water, I just, I don't think it has time to soak in. So we may have to address that. So I thought until we get that figured out, I'm gonna put these plants somewhere where they're gonna be happy. And I think they will be very happy right here. And they're also very pretty right here. So the big drift of Russian sage, we've got some Vanessa Bell, David Austin roses, which we dug up and transplanted last year. And I thought for sure these two were dead this spring and they're not. Oh, they're so pretty. That really soft yellow with this lavender, it's just a really good mix. And these will grow four feet tall. So they'll be a little bit taller while these will grow between, I think it's like 22 and 32 inches. So this will be our step down and then these grow 20 to 22 inches. So it'll be perfect. Now I am seeing that brown drip line right there. See that? And it kind of swings over. I can see it popping back up right here. I'm gonna eliminate that because I think with just the overspray of the sprinklers, that's gonna be the right amount for these plants. I don't think they're gonna want any more than that. So just a little hiccup, but I think this is gonna be better in the long run. And then I won't have to stress out about it. Ooh.
Okay, they're all in. They all ended up in relatively the same location. Uh, so you can see the sedum right here. Aren't those just so pretty? They add such beautiful weight to this area. And having that contrast with the other lighter leaved things, just it makes everything pop. I love it. And the Russian sage tucked in in front of those roses, especially once those kind of fill in, like all of them look like this. Won't that be so pretty? Ugh, again, the contrast with the lighter colored blooms with the darker purple blooms. And then this is where I decided to tuck the super bells. I think what we're gonna do is just see what the grass sprinklers will do in terms of water. So if we don't direct water these things, but just let them give some overspray, I think that might be plenty instead of running water directly to them. I mean, this is gonna be, I'll just have to report back with what happens. It might be a win or it might be a fail, we'll see. They do look pretty right there though. And the rose ended up right here, which I think will be nice. We do have some pink buddleia, which my buddleias had a tough year this year. I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I had nine of the microchip pink right in here. And I lost this one and there was one here. And then this one's barely coming back. So hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm gonna have to replace a couple, but I think that'll be pretty to have the bright pink and the lilac. And then in the spring, we do have the coral colored peonies. There are three in this area, one, two, and then there's one tucked in. Where did that one go? I think it's behind these grasses. Yep, <laughs> there it is, which is fine because I want this flower bed to look pretty from both sides. And that was blooming, that peony was blooming before these were tall. So we could see the blooms over the top of the, these. This is the, um, avalanche calamagratus i think they're so gorgeous i think it'll be nice to see some color a little bit higher you know if this shrub gets five feet tall or whatever we might keep it between the four and five foot range i think that'll be really nice we still have some camassia in here that's what these spent stalks are so i'm just waiting for those leaves to die back and then we'll cut those completely back but they bloomed beautifully in here i'm really happy with them we've got our skull cap right here which is in bloom a few of the branches got broken in our last storm, which is weird. I mean, we did have some wind, but like, I'm guessing the damage happened during the storm because I had broken branches the same exact way, like right at the base of the plant on some of our buddleias and hibiscus, like our dinner plate hibiscus. Random. But it's nice to see some purple color here. And then these are sedums that we planted in here two seasons ago, I think. And they're doing really well. That's why I think that these over here will do equally as great. And these sesky dwarf gold birch are amazing. My goodness, are those ever vibrant. And real quick update here. Our hollyhocks, look at these that we started from seed. They are just bulking big time. And we've got some blooms, look, oh, so pretty. There's the double champagne right there, gorgeous. I'm super happy with this group of plants though. Let me show you from the other side. Oh yeah, I love it. Now we just get to keep working on this area right here. We do have two bigger trees, like the Shade Master Honey Locust, which will get like a 35 foot spread, I think. And then the Choke Cherry, which I think is like a 25 foot spread. So we could possibly pop another tree kind of back toward that area. Now we just get to keep working on developing this spot right here. It's quite a bit more open than a lot of other areas out here. Uh, because we kept all of our plants that were in containers waiting for projects. We kept them in rows out here because they were close to a hose. It was easy to take care of them. But now we have those all being stored over there by the high tunnel. I mean, it was kind of like the plants that we use today. I knew I was going to get them out here in the garden. I just hadn't had time yet. And that's kind of what this space was used for last year. It'll be fun to just start adding more things in. And I'm really happy where these plants ended up today. I was sort of bummed when we had to pick them up and move them over here because they looked so pretty along the rock path by that arbor over there, but I didn't want to knowingly put these plants that want it to be on the dry side right into, uh, I think, eventual death. I think they would have died there had I put them there and tried to push it. Even if I tried to tinker with the water system, the soil over there is so different over here. Especially once I eliminated that front water line, I just cut it out and put two enders. I'll show you. Yeah, so right here, see where that water line tees off? There is one that goes through right here, and I'm gonna leave that for now until we see how these react. But there was a second one that came right here and it swooped right in front of all these plants and came right over here and connected there. So I just cut it out, put some enders on it so that we didn't have that extra water flow because I think the one line between that one line and any overspray from the sprinklers were gonna be perfect. Anyway, guys, that is it for today. We will report back, especially on the Super Bells project. <laughs> 
tell you how it goes. I'm hopeful because they, these double, what are they called again? I should remember by now, double twilight. They are so gorgeous. I love those double blooms. The fact that they're lavender makes it even better. So yeah, that will be really fun if that works out. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.